I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and sex shop owner. And I'm April, VP of an international high-end pleasure products company and boss queen sex toy mogul. We're best friends who make our own rules about who we are as sexual beings. With everything from how to be a badass in the bedroom to top tips for bringing your relationship to the next level, we have something just for you. So sit back, relax, and and enjoy enjoy the show. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Hello, everyone. Yo, 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 party people. Crank up the volume. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, She did that because we had a listener that actually (laughs) wrote in and asked if we could make the podcast, uh, the volume hot, like hotter, meaning more um, loud and cranked up because it's too quiet for some of you. Yes, we listened to all of your requests, so we're trying to turn this one up. So hopefully it doesn't... I wouldn't say all of your requests. We listen... Well, we read all of them. Because didn't someone want us to record naked? Oh, totally doing that <laughs> sometime but it doesn't mean we have to film it we can just do it and then tell them that we're naked i will because your house is kind of hot right now it's pretty hot in my house and then we can take suggestive photos that don't show our bits and they can make up all kinds of fancy stories even legends hot he told me your dog wants to take off his fur because it's baking in here all right everyone so this episode is very exciting because it is with two femdoms and they were so fun we were on their serious xm radio show yes channel 415 channel 415 which ps i was just with someone with serious xm radio and i could not find channel 415 i was like what's going on yeah they said it's so it's serious xm channel 415 uh, it's called I Want Radio. And I they do radio. it three days a week, right? Was it Monday, Wednesday, Friday? I think it's... Uh, no, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They are awesome. I'm going to read the bio in a minute, but it's with Dr. Lovejoy and Braddy Nikki. And they are femdom slash they do humili- humiliation work. Uh, and they actually... They don't even do any cam work at all. It's all just over the phone. Um, and it's not, they don't, don't do in person work with people. So it's pretty awesome. It's just using their voices to make a lot of money to fulfill um, predominantly, actually, all men. It's just men. They it's said, right? mostly, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They only work with uh, cis men, yeah. mostly hetero cis men. cis men. Yeah. Who want, want to be put in their place, be humiliated or controlled or whatever their, their desire is. Um, they have something they had for them. Some pretty incredibly funny stories, oh and also gosh. just like awesome shares, and and they're very intelligent, strong, badass, really are. empowered women. Like they were, and they were saying to us, like, we hope. We, why do you live in Santa Cruz? If you were down here, we'd do so much together. They're so. like, we should go out to dinner. We're yeah. like, I'm down, Let's but do we it. couldn't that day. But we're next time. We're coming for you. We'll make it happen. Yeah. So um, Patreon, everyone, we have a Patreon. We've talked about it, and we have to give a couple shout outs. Courtney, Poppy, and Craig, who donated on Patreon. We love you. Thank you for supporting us. Merci beaucoup. Uh-huh. You are definitely contributing to our um, microphone fund. Someone else is actually sending us some microphones that we also still need the these specific microphones, though. Specifically when we have guests and they don't know how to hold the microphones. But someone else is gifting us microphones that um, will can be connected to a table, right? They're like, yes, mm-hmm. yes. And we also need to figure out, um, which if anybody out there knows, how to record with microphones into zoom with two microphones and we then don't, we know how to do that his name is really? sean from the love drive and oh he's, nice. he knows how to do nice. that nice. yeah he's the one who everyone who did the episodes um everything uh you want to know about pussy eating yeah women wish you knew about eating pussy oh, or yeah. something yeah he's pretty, pretty awesome um yes yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll get to it but courtney poppy craig we love you very very much shameless sex sends you big hugs and uh consensual kisses um, okay, so sex question. Dun, 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 dun. Um, also, if you're in Salt Lake City, we are teaching the weekend that this uh, oh, yeah. following when this podcast comes out. August. It's the first weekend in August. First weekend Saturday August. and Sunday. There's there's two classes. One is Saturday evening. Mm-hmm. The other is Sunday morning. Brunches and blowjobs. Blowjobs and brunches. Yeah. Brunches blowjobs, and brunches. Blowjobs and brunch. And then Saturday evening is orgasms for everyone. Orgasm 101. This, that one's open to everyone. It's at Blue Boutique. Go to blueboutique.com and you can learn more and come learn with us. It is extra fun. Okay. Sex question. My wife frequently gets UTIs and yeast infections. I'm 
a male and always careful about washing my hands. Not cross-contaminated from anal play and vaginal and we're admittedly a little ignorant on lubes. Basically, we clean up before, after, and during and I was just curious if you guys have any additional suggestions. Thanks. Um, it's Ooh. interesting because we just recorded a podcast today that isn't going online for a little bit, but um, the woman, um, the doctor, Dr. Jolene Brighton, was talking about uh, birth control methods giving uh, frequent UT- UTIs, and or sorry, not UTIs, um, yeast infections. She was also saying gut health. Yes, gut health. Gut health can link, be linked to so, like an over amount of yeast in the body, mm-hmm. and your gut is linked to so many they things. Does it call the second brain? It is. Yeah. And if you are curious about nutrition, you, like they'll link most of the things that are wrong with you uh, health-wise to your gut. Mm-hmm. Uh, I learned this from my friend that has the podcast Postpartum Stories. Yeah. She, when she was trying to get pregnant because um, she was having fertility issues, she couldn't. And she started seeing all these naturopaths and they linked almost all of her issues to her gut. Yeah. And she had no idea. So she was telling me about this. And now, years later... Uh, when I figured out why I was getting um, a lot of issues, including my yeast infection, my yeast anniversary is yeast in April every year. Her first and hopefully last. It's linked to a lot of the foods you eat because food mm-hmm. is medicine and your gut health can be restored. Yeah. So even if you are having problems, including your sex drive, but yeah. she, Dr. Lovejoy, not Dr. Lovejoy, she's going to be on no, our show today, Dr. Brighton. Yeah was talking about that today. And um, it can be linked to... Uh, Yeast infections, for sure. I don't know about UTIs. Yeah, I don't know I about UTIs, but I would imagine if someone's getting frequent UTIs and yeast infections and you're being as clean as possible, there's probably something else going on with their body. Like April's saying, we're not doctors, so we can't really, really know, but checking out the gut health. And then they are saying, I'm ignorant on lubes. Water-based lubes have natural matter in it, so they're more likely to cause a uh, yeast infection than a uh, like a silicone lube because silicone yeah. lube doesn't have any uh, organic matter in it. So that's again, Uber lube would be a better option Do for you, you than a water-based lube. Is she peeing after they have sex? I mean, yeah, it doesn't say that, and so that's helpful if someone gets UTIs easily to always pee uh, after sex, and if you're having sex for a long time, to actually in the middle of sex also to take little urination breaks. Also, learning how to female ejaculate or not female. Yeah, we're, we're still calling it that, I guess. Um, how to ejaculate could help to push any bacteria through um, the Did urethra. Our friend, our close friend that we both know very well, had a chronic UTI problem, remember, for a long time. But it wasn't UTIs. It and wasn't. She oh. found out later when she got tested that it, w- it was a plasma thing that she was oh. getting specifically because her partner was a carrier of it. So, okay. yeah, so that was a different thing. It sounds like they know that it's UTIs and, and yeast infections, but like April was saying, you know, if something is keep happening over and over again, but you're being their most careful and it keeps on happening, there's probably a bigger issue there. Or not, maybe not bigger, but there's a root cause to potentially look at. And yes, lubes are part of it. Being in water too much, like does she take a lot of baths? Does she um, use, or UTIs are also caused by um, like underwear that has uh, used oh. laundry detergent that's scented. Yeah. Scented products can be a problem. And also uh, with yeast infections, can't the amount, if you're having, ingesting a lot of sugar, can't that be a, a trigger to build up yeast in uh, your body? There's, yeah. I, I've read that somewhere. Yeah, I mean, sugar, yeah, sugar is definitely, I think, the leading cause of or it's it's definitely a big instigator of it I don't know if that's the right word, but pre-diabetics yeah. oh yeah that yeah that is a sign a of, yeast, of, of being pre-diabetic is a lot of yeast infections too. yeah but there's just the utis here so it sounds like there's some more information that we would need and we are not doctors no we're not maybe, doctors <laughs> maybe uh checking working with a naturopath or someone who can do more work around gut health maybe dr brighton and and getting that. yeah dr brighton yeah and, th- and that podcast should come out in a couple weeks but dr jolene brighton you can look that up she has a whole bunch of information on her website um, and using a silicone lube like Uber Lube and uh, also getting rid of all scented products that you might be using and not hanging out in water too much or like wet panties or bathing suits um, can be an issue. Um, okay. Noise, noise advice, so Amy, everyone, noise. on the occasion, we're going to be talking about a sex act of the week and a sex toy of the week. This week is brought to you by edging. April, <laughs> <laughs> what is edging? Well, we talked about this specifically because this episode is with two femdoms. Mm-hmm. And in my years of product development and training, I learned from some folks that were in the dominatrix field about edging and using toys to edge. Edging is pretty cool because it actually brings you almost to orgasm, you know, whether it's however you want to get there. You could do it yourself through masturbation. Your partner can do it to you. So where you get to that pre 
orgasmic stage and it's right there and then you stop whatever you're doing and then you can build up again and then go back and build up again and that's edging so and then it makes that orgasm and you finally have it just ex- an extra explosion yeah. yeah yeah we sound like frat boys so <laughs> i learned from some folks that are in the the dominatrix community about using the the pulse solo from hot octopus for edging because it actually can be put on the penis and you can take it off right before an orgasm and then you can put it back on. And uh, the technology in the solo helps the penis. So it, it causes involuntary ejaculation and erections. Mm-hmm. That's like the oscillation. So you can put it on and then take it off as soon as you feel like you're going to come. Also, though, if you do orgasm after using it, you can have multiple orgasms mm-hmm. using the product, too. And penis owners, typically, it's more difficult for them to have multiple orgasms. So that can be a helpful tool. And if you want to try edging for yourself and you have a penis and you want to check out the solo, pure pleasure. Go to pure, it. purepleasureshop.com. Use coupon code SHAMELESSSEX in all caps. You get 15% off. And if you just want to try edging, you can try it anyway. You can try it with a toy. But edging also just applies to having sex yeah. or not just sex, masturbation. You know, you, I can edge with my own finger on my clitoris. And I feel, if I feel like I'm about to have an orgasm, I stop and pull back. And if you've never tried this, everyone, try it out. Because a lot of people do find that, wow, the orgasmic potential is Way bigger when I make my make myself wait for it and build myself up and kind of ride that wave. I've had it though where I've done edging and then it's basically like two or three times of almost coming and then something's happened like the doorbell rang and I was like, damn it! <laughs> so then I never received the the explosive orgasm that I was looking for. So then when I started re-upped my masturbation after the doorbell was answered, uh, it was not as what I wanted it to be. I was, was like, damn it. I had all of this, the build this up. time and energy placed into me wanting this orgasm. And I had it and it wasn't what I wanted it to be. But what is the lesson in that, April? Don't answer the door. Oh, don't answer the door when you're masturbating. Yeah. Just, just let your, it ring. Yeah, just let it ring. Tell them people to wait. <laughs> and then you can get, maybe like fantasize and get off about them. this person having to wait for you as it you masturbate. It was the UPS man. Oh, is it, was it a man? <laughs> Yeah, it was a man. Hey, you PS man. But he, he asked me for, he had, yeah, yeah, he had a package and he was asked me a, for my door code because like, we changed it. Was it role play? And he's like, hey, I have your package. No, but I was in a very interesting outfit. Like I was in a, hot, hot and uh, I was in a swimsuit and I was running down the stairs trying to put my, my, like uh, a short shorts on. So I just wouldn't be hanging out in a bikini because I live in, you know, by, next to a coffee shop and yeah. there's just people all the time. And so, uh, he was very perplexed by my situation and i don't know what he thought and then my dog was like and i was like oh damn it april smell she reeked like sex (laughs) i hope so so before we read the bio everyone this podcast is made possible by manscaped manscaped offers precision engineered tools for you or your man's family jewels april how do you feel about a bush you're not talking about George W., right? No, not W W W W W W. No, like a like a pubic hair bush. So I have to tell you, I personally love a trimmed bush. I always have, and my partner, that was part of the reason I loved him so much because when I first, you know, gave him the old one two one two BJ action, which <laughs> we like to call, what what what, what do we call blowjobs now? Um, we're calling it not a job. No, we're blow fun. No, <laughs> we're not blowing though. Oh, we had a name for them the other day. Do we day. make up a name? I think oh, so. I we'll come it. back to you we'll on come that. Back to it. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, but when I was going down there, I was just sh- amazed, d- amazed and shocked and loved his bush because he has a nice trimmed bush. I have had many times where I have been going down on people without a trimmed bush and I had some pubes in my teeth and then I got to get it out and I like stop and like, you know, doing that, like <laughs> the cat hairball thing. So uh, I actually... This Manscaped company makes this lawnmower 2.0. It says skin safe technology. Skin safe technology, but it's like it's an it's it's an automatic razor and it trims his hair. He used it just two days ago, and I was like, it looks really nice. And he said it made it all soft, and you don't risk damaging or nicking your balls with it. Oh, no one wants to snag a nut. No, you don't want to <laughs> snag your nut. <laughs> they also have a crop cleanser, a crop reviver, also known as For Your Goods. That's your crop. And best of all, the crop preserver. This is ball deodorant for anti-chafing. And let me tell you, I gave some to my housemate and had him try because I needed, I don't have balls. So I was like, you need to try this product and tell me how it is. And he went on a sweaty bike ride and he said he stayed fresh and dry and absolutely loved it. 
and no chafing. He said no chafing. No chafing. We asked for some feedback. Chafe free. And guess what? Our listeners get 20% off and free shipping with code SHAMELESS. And that has a capital S in shameless at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code SHAMELESS, capital S, and your bits. They shall thank you for it. I'm going to trim my bush with that thing, too. I'm going to trim George Bush. Oh, wait. Don't tell him that. Oh. Okay. Bio time. Dr. Lovejoy is an experienced femdom phone sex operator with years in the industry. Braddy Nikki is a very successful online femdom who is also co-owner of I Want Clips. They are also co-hosts of I Want Radio Show on Sirius XM Channel 415, as we said before. The hour-long, three-times-a-week show is devoted to human sexuality, fetish, and society's evolution towards acceptance and celebration of consensual behaviors. Its mission is to celebrate kink and fetish through thoughtful dialogue, education, role-playing, and coaching. To learn more, visit IWantRadio.com and IWantClips.com. Are you ready? I want Amy right now. You can have her. She's all yours. Yeah. But first, trim your bush. We are here in Los Angeles, and we have been at a trade show. We are recording of a storm at this trade show, uh, and we recorded a podcast, was that yesterday, the day before yesterday? We just went on another show today with some wonderful humans from I Want Radio, Braddy, Nikki, and Dr. Lovejoy. This is on Sirius Channel 415. Uh, it's live, but it was live, but it, you can actually find it for the next week, although this is coming out later, so I don't know how much that helps you, but go check them out. Uh, they have a wonderful show, and we'll be back on the show as well. And we're just going to dive in and have you explain who you are, because you're quite fascinating. You're Hi, what thank you. you. Yeah. Tell, Hello, us, tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, well, my name is Braddy Nikki. I am a fan- financial dominatrix. I've been doing this about eight years. Um, I have a very bratty style, a bratty princess style. So men basically give me money for being a greedy, demanding brat and looking great in a bikini. I'm also the co-founder and co-owner of IWantClips.com, which is a great site for independent content producers with a strong focus on female empowerment. We love to support our artists. Well, okay. But first, oh, actually, I'll ask you. Tell you tell who you are because I want to know how you got here into these these pieces because I'm sure there's a story. But tell us about you, Doctor Lovejoy. Hi, I'm Doctor Lovejoy, the resident uh, sexpert femdom, and I do uh, phone domination. It falls under the phone sex category, but I don't really consider myself phone sex because there's no oohs and ahs when you call me. It's mostly conversational, fetish oriented. I've been doing it for 15 years, and uh, and now I'm the host, uh, one of the hosts of I Want Radio. So uh, here I am. And we were just on the show, and it was so much fun. By the way, you have great chemistry. Thank and you. People Thank you. come in and have the funniest shit. They just that they share slash comment slash ask questions on. So I I, I really enjoyed the time. Thank I'm you. So glad to hear that. We had we a great show. Loved having you guys. Yeah, on. it was fantastic. Was Cannot wait for you to be on again. And it was all men that called. Is this yes. a regular thing for you? Yes. Yes. Every time we get a female caller, we're really excited because female attention is just. It's so rare. Yeah, it's so, so rare. We get it's a so nugget. It's so valuable, you know? And it seemed like a lot of cis hetero men, right? It, that, yes. From what I experienced. But it was, it's interesting. I loved, I mean, there's people that send you videos of their penises, oh, yeah. too. I'm like, Small oh, penises. Now, those are, mo- those, those are not radio show runoff. Those guys are call- the clients of ours uh, from the, yeah. the online world. But most of our listeners are in, you know, because we're drive time. So it's regu- just regular folks driving home. Where some, dr- you know, you've had a crappy day. You get to laugh, talk about sex, listen about sex. Yeah, easy, we co- want it easy. to be entertaining and funny, and we just want people to have a good time. Yeah. So, how does one? Because we had someone that was uh, Sierra Lynch, Sierra, Sierra, one of the two, Sierra, Sierra Lynch, uh, who's a humiliatrix on the show, um, and she told her story of how she got into that. But how did you get into these uh, professions of yours that I find so awesome and fascinating? Well, I actually had a friend who was camming, and she discovered financial domination, went for it right away, was instantly successful, and she messaged me. At the time, I wasn't really doing much of anything. I was go-go dancing, sometimes stripping, being a shot girl, like gigs, 
you know, nothing really exciting. And she messaged me and was like, hey, I found this thing called financial domination, specifically this bratty princess angle. And she was like, you're the most spoiled princess I know. So I think you would be great at it. You just got to play up the brat like a lot. And I was like, I can do that. And I did it and I did it well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's how I got into it. And you're one of the, so for, uh, I, sorry, I, I want clips. Yes, yes. I want clips.com. You're one of the founders, owners of that. Yes, okay. I am. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was doing a lot of clips and using a lot of different, different sites for different services, like one site for phone, one site for clips. And I felt like there wasn't really a complete site that offered everything that I needed and that my fellow dominatrixes needed. So it was just kind of born out of necessity, I looked at all these sites and thought, hey, we can do this better. Let's make this happen. Let's make a site that really is focused on what the artist needs. We were actually the first site to start calling performers, models, doms, artists, because we view what they create as art. They are not showing up to a set and doing what's told, which is totally fine. You know, for some people that totally works for them, but for a lot of independents, they put a lot of thought and care and creativity into creating something that's unique and different from mainstream, like hardcore porn. And we just feel that they are artists more so than they are performers or models. They're creating an experience, right? For their, for their clients. Exactly. Which is really, that is, it's art and people pick what they want. I love that. And I love that you're bratty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I feel like you're so sweet. I mean, it's your bratty side. It came, came natural to me. <laughs> Are you bratty in the bedroom with your partner too? Or is it more like a role that you take on for in the working room? I feel like I'm bratty in my real life to my partner and not, not in the bedroom. And then I play it up more as bratty Nikki. Okay. But I've always kind of been bratty. I was daddy's little girl. I was always spoiled. Um, I've always expected like my boyfriends, my husband to spoil me. So yeah, I'm a natural. <laughs> Sounds fun. What about you, Dr. Lovejoy? How did you get, you came from the music? I have a very or? different, absolutely yes. <laughs> different background than Nikki. Um, I came from the entertainment business. I was in the music business pretty much my entire life doing promo- radio promotion. Therefore, if you're listening to the radio, I was part of being responsible of any of the music you're hearing. So I was used to talking to men for years and years. And at one point, if you guys know anything about the music biz, Napster came along Mm -hmm. and things started to go down, down. And eventually my department didn't exist. It doesn't exist to this day. It's gone. It's a dinosaur. And and, uh, major labels have gone together. So half of the labels don't exist anymore. It's now just one thing where there was like Arista, Warner, Electra, Atlantic. None of that's anymore. So I became a fossil and a friend of mine who was also a male said, you know, you should look into phone sex because I know somebody who started business and ended up selling it. So I started looking around as I had just, my department got vanished into thin air And I was like, you know, I'd never been an assistant in my life. I jumped immediately to, uh, I was offered a job very fast. I went from college interning to I was offered a job straight away. And that parlayed very fast. And I was thinking, I'm never going to be an assistant. I will not do it. So I end up going on this site. This is long before, you know, Google's barely happening at this point. It doesn't exist anymore. It was called Phone Actress, okay? And what you would do is, for 20 bucks an hour, which then is amazing, this is like 17 years ago, you dialed in, and you would sit there, and calls would come in. But they would come in in different ways. It would be like, Asian, black, BBW. And then quickly, you'd have to be like, hi, I'm this, hi, I'm that. And I was like, fuck, I am good at this. You became those roles. I became the roles. I became the roles. Then one day a caller says, you know, you don't need to be doing this for another business. Did you know that there is a way to do this yourself? And I end up finding this platform. I go on there and I started with myself. And all of a sudden, very fast, I was making more money than I made in entertainment in three months. Again, this could not be possible now because the market is saturated to death. Um, I found my calling and I uh, 
started making, 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 and it only grew from there. From there, and in fifteen years, I have, my income has only gone up. Mm-hmm. In fact, the during the recession was the shittiest I ever did, and that was still above the average person's income. So I never look back on the music industry because there is no music industry, and there's no fucking way I'm gonna not be an independent person. I, I get to work for myself wherever, whenever, and it is a blessing. And I got to kind of uh, live out, by the way. Oh, so wait, sorry. sorry. I didn't know about this Dom thing. I realized that you could do this. Guys want to be told that they're nerds, losers. All of a sudden, I was like, oh, my God, I am getting my high school. I am getting my retribution now, and it's coming out. (laughs) And I was like, I am really good at this, and this I am a natural. And I feel like you, you can't just make money at this if you're not good. You, not anybody can just. There's more to it than saying you're an idiot. Do people tell you what they want you to kind of sh- how they want you to shame them, or is yes, that you figured you, out. You f- after time, you become so good that you hear keywords. I can tell you what you want within th- three seconds. Uh-huh. I hear it in your voice. I know words that you're saying that tip me off. Don't you feel the exact same way? Totally. And I try to just get them talking so they let you know say what, what they want yeah, without, without, without s- realizing it or without asking because that's not very dominant yeah, that's not to ask what either. they want. Mm-hmm. So that's like fun. it's. I mean, we we are shameless sex, and you're basically shaming. So, but it's it's it works though because people there's something out there for everyone, and people want that. That's part of their. That's part of their. I guess what. Their pleasure. But right? here's an interesting Absolutely. tidbit about this. The majority of my clients that I have at least uh, know for a fact that have revealed themselves to me, that have opened themselves to say, hey, this is who I really am in real life, they are, they would blow you away with how successful they are, mm-hmm. how attractive they are. But, you know, everybody needs their something. And think about it. It makes sense. When you're in a powerful position, you go home and your wife's like, yes, yes, yes. Sometimes you just want to put on some panties and be told, hey, guess what? Everyone in your office fucking hates you. Uh, your employees think you're annoying as shit. And, and, and that's it. That, that's it's all. Escape. It's very simple. Yeah. It's no harm, no foul. Not. I personally think that we are saving relationships I think from people stepping guys, out. I think most guys enjoy it while they're in the session, and then they go back to normal. It's not like they go through their lives thinking, I'm a loser, women hate me, just because they jerk off to that Fantasy. or enjoy that humiliation. That's not all that they are as a person, as a human being. I respect them, quite frankly. I, I don't truly hate my like I, I they, they know like yeah it goes we they go they come and then I'm like all right do you have a good time yeah. like it, it's we're during during the session and then after it's like eh. and they appreciate it and I think that's what's kept us with our long-term clients is be cool it's just cool like you know. have you tapped into the camp because the cam market is growing right and I feel like that's like a bigger piece of the pie right now within the uh, our industry and, I don't show and, myself so you no. don't I was wondering if that's so not not yet I used to do a lot of cam sessions. That's how I got really popular. I was never on a cam site. I always did it independently um, and taking payment through different sites. You don't show um, nudity, though, either. No, clear. I don't show nudity. I'll wear, like, a bikini or something sexy. Or I might just wear yoga pants and, like, a tank top. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I felt like camming was really good for me. It helped me build up my clientele really fast. And it was fun. I actually may cam at some point when I want clips eventually is going to have a, a camming at some point, and I will do it. But it'll just be doc- it'll be doctor sessions. Right. I will be a Dr. Lovejoy as, like, we're here and you can come hang out with me. But there will be no, you're going to get what you see. But they, they love it. That's what they, they're, they're looking for with me, me personally. I, I don't go as, like, glam. I'm just me. Yeah. But that's they what they did. They see me in a bikini. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they want that ass, those titties. Yeah. And there, so is for the, for the folks that are, so you think that one of the primary things that these people are getting out of, and this, it's mostly men, right? Do you have any, any female identifying clients? Never. No, Never. All men. Are, and are they, so the main thing you think they're getting out of it is this, it's like this release that they're kind of, kind of well, on your show, we talked about daddy issues. Someone had this question and it's a similar thing that there's maybe this, or, or maybe I'll, I'll ask if you think it's similar. Is it this, this part of them that has had this desire that may have come from wherever childhood or yesterday or whatever that is, that they have this desire to feel a certain way that they aren't feeling in everyday life or didn't get in the past and that they can have this moment with you, either of you, where they can finally get that feeling and then go back to everyday life where it's not always there. Yeah, I think it's like scratching an itch kind of. A hundred percent. And 
Have you guys noticed, or I don't know if you talk to guys that are jerking off, their voice significantly changes the second they orgasm. Significant, noticeably. Significantly noticeably. It's the most un like I kinda want you guys I wanna do it so you We want to give can, you guys a sample. Yeah, I want <laughs> I, 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 I really <laughs> want you guys to, to hear it because it's pretty unbelievable. And when you can you tap in it, it's like be like, oh my God. Like a lot of guys call us sissy guys. Like, oh Miss Nikki, you're so this, you're so hot. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, and then it's like, all right, well, it was thanks. Thank you. Uh, have a great day, Nikki. Thank you so much. I really appreciate Does that. Does the session end right after the oh, um, me- orgasm? Yeah, yeah. Usually? Yeah, for, yeah, the yeah, for the most part. It, I feel like it depends on the individual relationship okay. with the client because some people you're more friendly with and you have a more just friendly banter. So you might hang out and talk. I mean, my best clients don't really, they don't jerk off Same. while we're... Same. While we're sessioning or hanging out, you know, they, I'm Make sure material they, for later. Yeah, I'm Absolutely. sure they do yes. later, yeah. but they not try to be presence. respectful. Yeah. They are trying to be respectful. I think yeah. of it as getting the poison out. Once they get that poison out, then all of a sudden they're. I kind of feel like it's brain fog when your dick is hard. You, there's a big cloud over your head. <laughs> then the then then the the poison comes out and the cloud goes just. <laughs> The cloud goes away, and then it's like, okay, I'm going to resume back to my normal life. Thanks. Come again. Well, and the voice that you used, too, that, and I mean, you know it's a reenactment. It was kind of like all of a sudden they were like just smooth sailing in their power. 100%. Yeah. 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 100%. Interesting. I want to start paying attention to that. I, I mean, I'd say call us with your – send us some voice memos with, <laughs> with you with your uh, before, during, and after, but um, please don't actually. But um, <laughs> It's pretty yeah. amazing, yeah. actually. Like, shocking. Yeah. I have several clients who speak to me in a different voice. Mm-hmm. Because they portray either a sissy thing, and they just are like, oh, or, or yeah. the sub voice. They call as a sub, but they're not even like that. And the real voice is nothing like that. Yeah, I don't have like a ton of sissies. I've had some really good ones, but overall, my clients, I feel when they call or we're on cam, and you know they're speaking, they just have that sense of weakness in their voice that they're submissive. You can sense the weakness that they want to worship you, that they are here to like worship you as your goddess, as their goddess. And then when it's over, yeah, they sound kind of normal. Yeah. It's like reality kicked right back in. Do you think that um, mommy issues are a big theme? Like some that people that a lot of your clients might have interesting relationships with or my mom or, or women or the feminine and they're desiring like, cause I'm just relating to my experience with daddy issues and, and why I want to be in, in this submissive place and sometimes, you know, punished or I'm not really, uh, Maybe a little bit of humiliation, actually. But do you think that there is, is some sort of correlation? I don't know if you even find out that part of their life or their history. I think there definitely is for some because I see a lot of other dominatrixes uh specializing in mommy. specializing that's in like thing. this mommy yeah, dom character thing. for me like i'm a brat so it doesn't really i don't attract those type of people to me but i do think it is a thing it's a thing I've seen yeah. it in our we don't ever lot. we don't play that uh, up ever and i think that's a, a specific women that's their thing but yeah i, I never we actually i get a little annoyed every once in a while i'll get somebody to be like yes mommy like no no, no. I'm doctor. Yeah. I'm not your mother. Yeah. Don't call me your mother. You've and got I say your own I'm mother. princess. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not your mommy. But they're, I think that's a specific, uh, they're looking for something very specific that, yeah. that they're not getting from us. But I do think most of, well, for a lot of the clients or, you know, people that are into this, it is rooted somewhere in their youth, their adolescence, some experience turn them on it was maybe their first sexual experience or the first time they realized something made them horny and it stuck with them through life one of my highest spending clients was an altar boy and grew up super religious catholic yes of course (laughs) (laughs) and he told me that he can't get a boner without feeling some sort of shame because in you know his teenage years every it was just masturbation shame boner shame anything sexual was with a sense of shame. So now he can't get off without that. Nylons to me would be the closest thing to a mommy-ish thing. When I get someone with a nylon fetish, I always ask because to me that stems from when you're younger, a teacher, because, because think about it, nylons in this Mm -hmm. era, no, it's something kicked back. Your mom, a teacher, and they're always like, yes, Mm -hmm. sometimes it's wonder woman, Mm -hmm. you know, some, some, (laughs) just something, but they're everything goes backwards Mm -hmm. everything we were just talking about uh on the show was it yesterday dick flicking or uh, what flicking pain pain infliction 
And I feel like that stems from being like teased and tormented on a playground, like somebody coming up to you and flick, being like yeah. flicking at you. Yeah. Where is that? Because who's flicking as an adult? Well, I, yeah. I, I love being spanked, and I used to get spanked when I was younger, and sometimes with a belt, and sometimes I have been kind of flogged a little bit with a belt too. The Not belt super is so hard. old school. It's mm-hmm. super old school, and uh, I think I mean it must come from my childhood. Of course, because, totally. And I, you know, I love like the the sting of it, and it really t- turns me on. And I didn't even know it would until I started exploring that. How about soap in the mouth? Anybody get that? Anybody, come across anybody get those? And yeah. I never had that as really? a child. A bar, no. uh, I, I got the belt. The, or, yeah. or stand in the corner with a bar of soap in your mouth. Not not me personally, but but that's a, like an old... The Irish Spring. Yeah. No. <laughs> you know what's interesting is I wonder if these fetishes are going to die die out because people don't really spank their kids anymore. Oh, it's God, interesting. You know, good what do they do so now? So much parenting information is shared nowadays, so I feel like parents are... People have timeout fetishes. Yeah, because yeah. that's... Put me in time out. <laughs> you can't spank your kid and now. That's abuse. nylons. Totally. Yeah, who's wearing nylons? Well, yeah, but we're in California, so we're, we're forgetting cold areas. But I still don't think they're a thing for, for younger women. Oh, right, right, right. You yeah. know, Girdles, for like too. The, those are kind of out. People yeah, don't wear girdle. those as often. And think about that. The yeah. men with these corset fetishes. Mm-hmm. Where's that coming from? Yeah. Girdles. Yeah. Yeah. Or like the control top panty. Loads of panty wearers. I can't, I can't go a day without a call that doesn't have somebody talk wanting to talk to me about wearing panties. Yeah. They're wearing Not, panties yeah. in that moment. Every, every day. Yeah. Not yeah. a day goes by. And I actually, I have a question for you guys that I wanted to get to on our show that we didn't. So I'm really happy we have this time. But what would you, advice would you give to like a man who wants to wear panties but doesn't know how to tell his partner? Or... A woman whose, you know, partner comes to her and is like, hey, I want to wear panties. Because I feel like women are weirded out by men's fetishes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why we're in business. Not exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, We were talking about this. And, you know, this is it's funny because our podcast is all about how can we. And I I used to say use the word eradicate shame. But actually now I like to stick more to uh, help people move through or with shame because shame can be a great teacher and keeps you in business. So (laughs) so and everyone has it in these small degrees. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's someone already has shame maybe about, oh, there's this thing I'm into wearing panties and they talk to their partner about it and their partner double shames them by saying, oh, that's weird or that's gross or I'm not comfortable with this. Um, so I would suggest I, for anyone that has anything that they're interested in to, um, to tell their partner what's true, right? So there's this thing that I've been thinking about that I find really attractive. I'm really afraid to tell you, be, like, be honest about that, about the fear and the fact that this is really scary. Um, and, but this is something that I'm interested in and I'm not necessarily, necessarily saying that you have to do this, but this is a thing for me. And, um, you know, is this a safe place for me to express that here? And then you share what that is with them. But I think one of the keys is to share that it's a scary conversation, not pretend like it's not. And also not, don't blindside them by just showing up in panties one day, you know, (laughs) get, get, have the conversation before and, and see where they're at. And if they shame you, then let them know like, wow, your, your response actually, or maybe you get turned on by them shaming. you. I don't know. But if they shame you and it doesn't feel good, let them know that, you know, okay, there's a part of me now. If it feels like I need to really hide my, Myself, or I'm not really safe being me and this is a part of me that is really important to me so what are some other ways that I can find um, an avenue to express this you know what and again can I see a sex worker to go and express this can I watch uh, you know porn where or I guess they want to wear panties or whatever that is but um, I yeah I, I think it's important as partners also if you're not into it as the partner to lovingly say oh well Thank you for sh- like thank them for sharing. It's brave, right? You're so totally. brave for sharing that. And as I feel into it, you know, it's not really my thing. But let's come up with some ways so that you can still maybe feel seen, or maybe it's and maybe it's not by me, or maybe it is by me. But we find ways that I still feel comfortable with, um, or maybe it's not. It's not really my thing, and and that's just where I'm at. But you don't have to say, "Ew, that's gross. That's weird." I'm like, you're when you do that, you're just you're a, you're. Someone's going to closet it and then maybe, but then maybe you'll get clients. Just saying. <laughs> I just had an actually, I want phone sex call come right, right now is tapping on me. <laughs> oh, really? I, I did, literally did. It literally just well, happened. Soon you can. It was, soon. Yeah, no, it was, I'm <laughs> wondering if you have, is it super pertinent and important to share if the panty 
wearing is not, if they want to do it in front of their partner, of course, you'll have to say something, but how important is it to share if it's something that you do and it turns you on and you're, you know, calling or, you know, operating with someone that's working in the, in the shaming field or whatever they want to do. Uh, if it's, if it doesn't have to involve their partner, it would, it doesn't sound like it's hurting anyone. Right. And there's no consent involved because you're the consenting person wearing the panties. So my thing is, if you want to involve your partner, maybe the conversation, as Amy was mentioning, but if you don't want to involve your partner, then maybe just do it when they're not home. I think sometimes, too, a lot of these, the the symbolism around panties is constriction and holding it tight. Oh, really? Yeah, I I think it's the silky feminine feeling. That the... But it's and hold and holding it. It's cradling. It's cradling their cock, right? Yeah. Like, but they love those silky. They love when we say things like silkies too, right? Like, because do you get a lot of thong wearers? Yes. Yeah, they, they they just. It's it blows me away because I feel like these are very easy things to come to your partner with because mm-hmm. it doesn't make you gay. It doesn't make you weird. It doesn't make you anything but just wanting to have really a fun time. You're just Does curious. Not make, it doesn't make you anything other than you're just experimenting. And I always I always say to Nikki, we would not be in business if people were A, having sex or it was just easy for everybody to come to the table with these. What we look at, because we're used to this like little minutia kind of things, like, eh, throw on some panties, go, ah, have fun. But that is regular person USA cannot have this conversation without looking at their partner like, oh my God, what is wrong with my partner? Or I really like the advice you gave about prepping your partner. Like, hey, this is important to me. So don't, you know, humiliate me for it. Let me down gently. And then also, you know, expecting that your partner just might not be into it, but coming to an agreement or compromise or solution. I mean, relationships are always just a, it's, it's a negotiation. It's, it's figuring out what are your needs and what are, are mine. And hopefully most of the time they can meet each other or overlap. And if they don't, there's so many options, you know, and sometimes the options are separation. You know, that's, that might be part of it too. But there's so many options there for us to still get needs met that might not be. And also not putting all of your needs to be having them all be met by your partner. You know, if you're in a monogamous relationship, then maybe your agreement is that most of your sexual needs will, that will be met there. But there's other avenues like how safe would it be for so if you're there's a partnership where you know a man goes up to his 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 partner and you say it's his wife i'm really in this pan that want to wear panties she's like i'm not really that into it uh, it's not really my thing but i'm thank you for for sharing that and i like i you know i respect you and your interests and here's these women that you can call and pay to go and have these experiences who you're not seeing them in person exactly it's, it's safe. funny it's safe and it's not threatening it's funny that people like i have clients that get threatened by just having their partner watch porn but it like it's, it has nothing to do with you it's such a safe place for people to still still get needs met and how i mean and you i hope you all agree but how impossible is it for partners to show up in every single way all the time sexually for people ebb and flow and change you can't you can't and it's impossible right like one thing i heard you guys say on your podcast a lot is we're not robots no and we say that often about sex workers because they like clients just assume yes you're ready to cam at 7 a.m on a tuesday and you know we've always referred to sex workers like that but hearing that you know, the non-sex worker female also feels like men treat them like robots. It's was just fascinating to me. Yeah. It's constant too. It's you just because you do this, you take phone sex calls, you're behind a screen. Well, how are you not available twenty four seven? As if you're I'm a human. Some yeah. kind of <laughs> like because you, this is your you've chose that. That's your occupation. You are some thing that just sits there fielding calls all day with no life and also strapped to your computer can you look this up no i can't because i'm not sitting in front of my you're not oh i'm out living my life i'm sorry mm-hmm. i'm sorry i'm sorry for that how dare i it's true. We it's need. True. And we need to. And I also think, like, I I have to be mindful and remember that about my partner. I'm like, I want my partner to show up in all these ways. And typically, there's some things that I just have to do uh, and get elsewhere. I love kind of certain. I, I'm not. I don't have a lot of fetishes per se. I'm learning slowly of what I'm into. Like the foot thing we talked about. Like you, uh, you are just now learning about your. Uh, um, I mean, I've experimented with foot fetish towards the men who pay me for years but never my personal sex life until more recently and i discovered it's something i really enjoy 
It's interesting to explore, though, and know that you're, and I think for the listeners out there, know that your partner just can't do everything all the time, and having these kinds of resources is amazing. And the fact that it's also creating so many jobs for people that perhaps are in places in the world or the country that you don't have a lot of access. I mean, look, like you can work if you're in Nebraska in the middle of nowhere, you can still do this type of work. It's a niche, a niche yeah. thing, too. Like, everybody's got that. We, we cater to, like, a very specific, at least you, you, can, you can get this safely. No, you don't have it, it's not going to fuck up your life, your marriage, and then go, you go back home. That's it. Nobody needs to know. Shut the door. You got your thing out. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Not affecting anybody, not hurt, no harm, nothing. What would your advice be to a partner who's uncomfortable with their partner working with one of you? You know, someone who is is say, and you know they don't want to meet their partner's needs in their panty fetish or whatever that is, and they and their partner so wants to work with you, and they think that they they're not comfortable with. What would your advice be to that person? I think that if if the partner is so uncomfortable to the point it's causing friction in your relationship and you're still engaging in something that makes your partner hurt it's not the right relationship for you if you need it that bad to the point you're willing to hurt your partner and witness their pain then you need a new partner good one yeah yeah we we give walk away advice all the time because people sometimes just need to to figure it out recalibrate so I, i love that advice if if that's not the case, I think I would be open with my partner and say, okay, so here's the, if you can't give me this and you're you're okay with this, there's this. Um, I don't even know this person. This person's never gonna know me. They're never gonna see me. Would you mind if maybe I uh, spoke to this person? And and it's cool if you're if not then then walk. If not, yeah. then maybe your relationship is not for you. But that's just sexually. I wouldn't dump an entire marriage or whatever over uh, a a fetish or something it depends i think on how deeply it's ingrained in a person how badly they need that fetish to get off um i think some guys make the mistake after they talk to their partner and the partner their partner's yeah like yeah cool i'll try that and then they want to do it every time and then you're like oh shit this is my sex life now i didn't know we were doing this every day So I think it's important to ease into things and to not make that be the thing all the time, especially if your your partner's doing it for you, not because they're really into it. This podcast is made possible by some of our favorite things. Uber Lube is one of them. Amy, why do you love Uber Lube so much? I don't just love Uber Lube. I am obsessed with Uber Lube. Before I used Uber Lube, I had no idea that a lubricant could be this good. Uber Lube is a luxurious lubricant that I literally want all over my body. Yes, I mostly use it for sex and intimacy. And let me tell you, it enhances everything. It has no flavor. It has no scent. It never gets sticky. It almost feels velvety and powdery on my skin. I want it everywhere. And let me tell you, it also has other uses. You can use it in your hair, for your hair frizzies. You can use it for massage. You can use it for chafing. Again, mostly using it for sex and it allows me to feel that skin-on-skin intimacy that a lot of other lubricants do not allow for. April, what about you? What do you love about Uber Lube? I love the beautiful bottle. It's glass. It looks like perfume or some kind of beautiful cosmetic. Put it on my nightstand. Nobody knows what it is. So to learn more about Uber Lube, go to uberlube.com. Enter coupon code SHAMELESSSEX in all caps. You get 10% off and free shipping. This podcast is also made possible by omgyes.com. April, what do you love about OMGS? Oh my God, yes. I love OMGS. It's a research-based online program where you can look at two seasons, external, internal, vulva stimulation. It's tools for your tool belt. Add things to your menu. So if you're looking to up your orgasm game, if you own a vulva, maybe you already have amazing orgasms. Maybe you want even more amazing orgasms. Maybe you've never had an orgasm. OMGS is something for you. If you're a vulva fan and you want to learn how to pleasure a vulva, OMGS is something for you. Again, research-based. You get to watch these tasteful, non-pornographic videos that give you a real idea of what real body is like so that you're not left in the dark. To learn more, go to omgs.com backslash shameless. You get $5 off and you can watch the videos unlimited times. It is a game changer for all of my clients, all of our listeners who have watched it. You can find out for yourself. Go check it out. 
Has that happened to either of you two? Have have has anyone come to you with a fetish that neither of you had really dealt with before that you were like, oh my god, experiment experimented with it, and then suddenly it became routine in your sex? Not I not no definitely not a fetish. I re- went on a a date with someone recently who has a wet look fetish, and it's not like latex wet look. It's literal literally water, and it's and and it's very arousing for him to and see. You know, if I was in a bathing suit, and, I, and by the way, I haven't I haven't I haven't dove into this yet. Dove, oh, interesting it's word. So fair a faucet, yeah. by the way. I know, well, and I have it, but I haven't. If so, if I was in a bathing suit and I got in water, it wouldn't really do much. It's the unsuspecting, right? A normal outfit, He's like you know, jeans and a white t shirt, and you you go in the hot tub or the pool or the bathtub and you come out and and he thinks it's related to having his first sexual experience at the beach and he's a surfer and so they thought it was just this really arousing thing and i heard that and i was like and so i asked my one of my questions was do you need this to get aroused you know can you get aroused without that and he said yeah i don't need that it is my spank bank material and i find it super hot but i don't have to have it every time so i would find ask that information beforehand and we haven't i've gone on one day with him but we've totally talked about it and and that at some point you know, and I thought I was like, that sounds fucking hot. That is so hot. That's a different one. Hot? I thought I it was hot. hot. And, I, and it seems, and it also sounds really easy, by the way. I can turn you on by just jumping in my hot tub in my clothes right now. And that, that's all, like, all I need to do for you to just be like, you losing him. And it sounds, I would, I would totally explore that. Um, so yeah, I haven't, and I haven't experienced someone wanting, needing to make it a regular thing or expecting that to be there, but that's just another conversation to have. You just say, you know, you go and try the thing and then your partner's like, Oh, can we do it every time? And you check in with yourself. You know, I, I love exploring this with you and I, it's not something I want to do all the time because it's not my thing. It's, it's yours. And, and I want to share this with you. So can we do it X amount of times per month or per week or whatever that is? And just speak to it as opposed to like, Oh fuck, I'm just going to do this thing that I don't want to do with this person, but I don't, have you ever had a fetish come your way that became a regular thing that you didn't really want to be a regular thing? I was, I was just digging deep to try to think about that. I don't, I don't, nothing, nothing was over the top or, or strange to me. Um, like the, what, cause the wet look thing was, I, I'd never wet heard look. of that. Yeah, Is that wet, yeah. wet look? Yeah, I, wet I, I was thinking about, could you substitute oil? Ooh. For the wet look, because that could be fun. I mean, he did make a comment about Uber Lube because I, we were talking about Uber Lube on this podcast all the time, and he was like, and it, he, and I don't know, did I give him a bottle? Anyways, he made a comment about like pouring Uber Lube all over me, oh. and that so that seemed to somehow potentially seem really hot. To Do him you know what well. I'm picturing for your date? Uh, like, you're wearing a tight white tank top, and you gift him with a squirt gun, <laughs> and Ooh, and that. on wet t shirt like wet t shirt contest style. Because I'm thinking. While you're saying this, when he wet look, I'm thinking white shirt with nipples poking yes, through. Yeah, no bra. That's Gotta have the me, nipples. Yeah. That is to me all I'm thinking is, um, you know, the movie uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont yeah. High. Yeah. She gets out of the pool. Yes. And the water is drenching. Nipples are hard. I, I'm so I'm reenacting this right now. By the <laughs> She's way, totally Fast Times at Ridgemont yeah. High. Song uh, over you, there. you know, you, yeah. you feel me? Yes. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking, and I'm thinking that's probably you know the, in the surfers had like. Whoo, slow-mo coming and the water is dripping the nipples are hard as a rock poking through so yeah i'm all i can think of is white tea and you gift that person a squirt gun and you're gonna have a good ass just on. squirt away and then they also get it's the act of them also squirting oh yeah speed. you get yeah. wet yeah, yeah. Or, whatever, or, or like a water balloon oh. Like, oh no i'm wet oops <laughs> yeah oh my god my titties oh, are you hard. got me yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, i think it sounds fun and when i hear people i had a client once that said that they were um they were a feeder we talked about this on the last podcast when i hear people's fetishes i'm not only fascinated but i think a lot of them are just super exciting some of them are really cute to me and just yeah i just there, i i appreciate the uniqueness of, of it and i see also how scary it is for them to share that and how a lot of folks have been shamed or just closeted and never asked for it but for me for the most part as long as it's consensual i'm like that is awesome or hot or adorable yeah. or something yeah yeah, What's the agree. most off the cuff thing that you've kind of like heard or call, like from callers or clients or um, because I want to fr- fill my brain with some of these things out there because I'm so curious. Oh god, we could oh, blow, we could blow your so brains much. away. Um, well, Sammy the meat fucker that calls our show was uh, 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 very uh, uh, weird. Loser lube, loser lube. Tell her about loser lube. Oh, loser well, lube. Since you're since you're lube aficionados, we have Uber lube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have Uber yeah. lube. Okay, well, how about this for some lube? What's loser? I lube? have this uh, guy. He actually calls the I Want Radio Show. You know, every so often. Yeah. And he was actually one of my first phone sex callers, and it was a domination call. So I was making him like 
write loser on his body and do stupid things. And then I told him to jerk off with hot sauce. And I told him <laughs> it was loser lube. And he, I mean, he didn't even get to orgasm because he was screaming in the shower, like wailing, ah, like this is so painful. Oh. I hate it. And what's, I hadn't talked to him for about five years because I just don't, I don't, you know, I run a company. I don't have time to do phone sex that often. Um, but we'd started the show and he still remembered it and called in and like reminded me of that story. Like it stuck out to him so much. I don't know if I presume it was in a good way because he sounded happy to call. (laughs) And then he jerked up, proceeded to jerk off with Ben Gay for us, maybe hot and and toothpaste and toothpaste. Yeah. But I don't find him like to me, that's. That's, that's a basic. typical caller. Yeah. I think Sammy the meat fucker who said he <laughs> took the poultry, like the chicken breast. Yeah, poultry pounded. Together to make a pussy was by far like the weirdest thing. We actually looked at each other during that show with our jaws dropped. Like, wow. We thought we heard it all, but we haven't. I've been asked. Uh, I did a custom video sitting on a cake, which is very messy. You were sitting on a cake? Yes. And you sent, uh, it was a video that you sent for someone? Yes. To someone? Okay. Yeah, it was a custom video. We and he cake wanted right me. here. We're still oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was pretty weird. I feel like I don't get as many I get weird, weird get requests. Weird. I get a lot of Because weird I'm like shit. a bikini girl, so guys are just like, you're hot, be mean to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I do see a lot of, you know, weird requests because we have IWantCustomClips.com. So Ciara Lynch, actually, who you mentioned earlier, who's been on your show, she's coming on our show again very soon. Um she gets a lot of weird requests. Like I've seen hers where she gets, she you know, tampons. can you be a, yes, I heard yeah. that. Can you be a vampire in furs and do this to me? And I saw the guy ask her on Twitter, like, hey, did my custom cu- clip sell really well for you? She's like, no, nobody else is into that. <laughs> Just you. So it's weird. I've got uh, some pretty weird, weird uh, one, which is. If you're a CBT, which is cock and ball torture, there was one guy who would like to, he would get on webcam. I saw him do this. It's a fact. He would put his penis in a drawer and slam the drawer shut. Okay, that's weird. That's more painful. But here's, I'll give you a good weird. There was a guy, oh God, I loved him so much. He would go to Costco. He would get uh, a Costco size thing of Vaseline. And he would get on cam. You can't see me. It's one way cam. And he would take the Vaseline and put it all thick glo- glops, like scoops, all over his face and put lipstick on like Baby Jane. You guys know the, the, the movie Baby Jane? Okay, it's, it's whatever happened to Baby Jane. It's like clown, clown fucking lipstick. It was like <laughs> crammed. And then he took a dildo, dipped it into the tub of Vaseline. He's like, I'm going to throat fuck myself now. So while – when I say it's gooped, it's, it's gooped. It's like – Everywhere, like a fucking clown. And he took that dildo with all of that. And he's like, ah. And I, was, oh, wow. I couldn't believe. I honestly couldn't believe my fucking eyes. <laughs> I was like, this is like nothing I've ever seen in my life. That was. These are anomalies, though. Right. Yeah. Right. These are. Some guys are very, very specific in their fetishes. And they very wanted, like specific. one guy uh, used to call me and he wanted to be humiliated for having like gay thoughts while wearing Knee high socks. Like mm-hmm. I had to wear knee high socks, or it did not work. Like that he is was so not Catholic turn school, up. and it like he was just so specific about it. Mm-hmm. It's so it's so. My favorite part about it is how psychological it is because I actually really like is. to kind of break it down with yeah. all of them. Like, where is this coming from right now? Mm-hmm. There, a lot of guys like to repeat things. So that's the yes. big thing too. Specific. If you've got to to be good at what we do, you've got to be real tuned in, and you really do have to pay attention. Because they're giving you the bone. They're telling you. There's specific words, a huge word, um, which I don't usually say it on the air because it's now so taboo, the F-A-G-G-O-T. Mm-hmm. One of my biggest words. Like, it's not the uh, thing on your website. Okay, yeah. I sell MP3s. I make MP3s. That is my number one. So when I use that word, oh, do they sell like a hot cake. Mm. They want to hear that word because it's part of the let's see, sissy boy. Yeah, it's part of the that whole. Well, it's regular, and it's even no, even not even sissy. Regular, just regular guys. Uh-huh. Like you're a bleeping bleep, yeah. um, and like it's so weird. I'll do it in MP3s, but like, I feel awkward doing it. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, but holy shit, does that sell? Like, I can't even tell you. That is the num- they that word drives them wild. Think about it. It's so it's taboo. Yeah. 
And oh my God, to be accused, to be, to hear that about yourself. Cause there's a lot of repression yeah. going yeah. on, but wow, that is a hot spot, but they lead you into, they lead you into it. If you listen, they will guide you right into what they want. Yeah. There's subtle cues. I feel cues. like certain words, you can notice that they whimper a little bit or yeah. they immediately ask, can I tribute you? Which is basically a tip in femdom world, but it's a cash gift or I guess a gift gift mm-hmm. that's given without the expectation of anything in return, simply because you said that word and it's triggered in their brain. Mm-hmm. Like, they just recognize it and it turns them on. And that's, that's another, uh, here, this will blow you guys away too. There's a specifically guy I'm talking, a phone guy I'm talking to. He said, so he pissed me off. And then we had this whole little thing. I'm like, oh, I'm going to block you and I will ignore you. He made a new account, sends me a thousand dollars. Literally I wake up, I see thousand dollar tip on my, I want phone thing. I'm like, wow. what? And it was only to get, because I'm like, fuck you. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna listen to your shit. That's the game. That, that's, oh. that's the game. Yeah. yeah. Wake up. There's a thousand dollars waiting for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the I easiest money I've ever made. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not. I'm not. That's. It's just a psychological mm-hmm. game. Yeah. There wasn't sex involved in any of this. In fact, that's the poetry guy I was talking about. Oh, really? He just pissed, yeah. He pissed me off, and it was like, all right, goodbye. Mm-hmm. Talk down to me. I'm done with you. Mm-hmm. Oh no. Mm-hmm. And they will come, and I don't ask for it either. I don't say, "Give me that money." Yeah. They, they just, they know how to get you back. Yeah, I think that's one of the most empowering things about being an online sex worker is if somebody just pisses you off, you just block them. Yeah. Like you gone. just don't have to deal with anything. It's so empowering. It is, empowering. and usually they'll pay you to come back. They will. <laughs> that's kind of a bonus, isn't it? Yeah. And the SESTA FOSTA law stuff that doesn't apply to this market, right? Not the, no. Not okay. only real time. Only like, real time sessions. Yeah. Okay. That's and we we don't good. meet. We don't. Nikki and I do not meet anyone ever. We are a hundred percent. You don't. Yeah. You don't get near us yeah no not no. unless you want to come on our show or and feel everything yeah. <laughs> at avn right. some guy came up to us and uh just just to talk to us just handed us each a hundred dollars just for a, five minutes of conversation wow. and oh no to take a picture wish that us. would happen to us yeah, we're in the wrong it does. industry <laughs> no seriously if you just kind of put it out there i swear to god it just happens mm. Let's put it out there put it out there we're creating an amazon wish list we got get the amazon wish list going i'm telling you there's so many people who would love it's not even about they just want to see you have nice things or they just want to make you happy just want to make you because they enjoy you know the form of entertainment that you provide Mm -hmm. appreciate it's it's appreciation what do you think our specialties would be if amy and i were to go into your line of work (laughs) do you have any ideas have yeah, being yeah, being just you is you. That's Damn, it. You I don't have that was gonna be yeah. something. Yeah. Really, <laughs> that, but but that was what I don't think that's the thing. I think seems to be a problem with a lot of people who come into this. They're not themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People the fall for you oh. because you're just you do you you do you. Like I don't pre- I, I do me. She does yeah. her. Mm-hmm. I don't go like oh my god, this looks like it's the number one selling thing. So I'm going to go do that now. Well, they'll be able to Never. see right through it if it's not you. It's, I mean, then it's a performance that maybe, and maybe they can't see you. Maybe you're a great performer, but it's going to feel better for you and them if it's going to be authentic. Place. I see you both being successful, just being communicators mm. and having full on conversate open, di- open dialogue is where your money would be at. Yeah. Like femdom is a state of mind. Yeah. Totally. You don't really need to just be like, you're an idiot. You're a loser. It's convert. It's a lot of conversation. Mm. And, but, powerful and like you don't give a shit yeah. they just want someone to talk to who's you know feel confident confident mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm a con- like confident yes. girl yeah. it, it's definitely not about you're this you're that it is so much deeper it's it's relationships yeah it's establish establishing it but yeah i don't know do you guys humiliate i because you guys haven't done any of that here no yeah not really i i mean i'm i am a more of like the super nice person that wants everyone to be happy and people and, pleaser. Yeah, total people pleaser, caretaker, all of that. So I'm, I'm definitely playing more into that role. I feel like I have this bitchy side that's slowly coming out. The older I get, I'm like, what is going on with me? I just like more eggy or something. And maybe I would be a good humili- Maybe that's a way I think for you me should try it. to yeah. also get out some like some of my aggression. Just is- because I run a company, I have this podcast. It's very fulfilling. I get stressed the fuck out, and then I've got all these other things that happen. And sometimes I think that. I just want to be 
be like, hey, fuck you. Or, you know, you'd love it. But only to someone that would want, if they would yeah. want that. I don't want to yeah. just say that to someone at the, you know, the cash register at Trader Joe's or something. <laughs> like, yeah. hey, it's, someone's asking for it, but it, yeah, I guess it'd feel better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's all about them, I guess. It's fulfilling. Yeah, it, some it, some clients are like, you must humiliate guys everywhere you go. And I'm like, no, I'm actually a decent human being, and I'm not going to humiliate you unless you're paying me for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the yeah. other thing, too. Yeah, like, please, when we go out, we're not like, hey, look at that loser over there. It's it's not even close. No. Yeah. Not even close. Money talks. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even going to give you my verbal jive unless you're paying me. Mm-hmm. That's my yeah. that's my service. Mm-hmm. I love I, that you too seem to love what you do, and there's also this like this this love for your, a lot of your clients too. There's this yeah. piece there, maybe not all of them, but it seems like there's some little pieces there that you actually um, truly care about. You think I forgot what exactly words it used, but there's someone that you said like oh, I love this you know this client, and it's yeah. just I think that there's that's really beautiful that it is this niche thing that um, is different from what most people are choosing. Well, same with our career is a little different too, and um, and you love it. And and it's so empowered. They're humans too. Yeah. We're all, yeah. we all shit the same. Yeah. We all pee the same. <laughs> They're just because they got their thing doesn't make them less of a human being. Mm-hmm. They treat me with respect. I treat with them the way they want to be treated, which it, it, it's, I feel like it's a respectful back and forth. Yeah. It's mutual. Yeah. It's mutual. And unless somebody disrespects and like stalks or does something awful, yeah. I love it. It's fantastic. I, pro- I provide you with the service. You provide me with, my income, yeah. it's two way street. Mm-hmm. It's business. It's yeah. business. It's business. Yeah. But I do dig some of them. I've got yeah. some pretty I, damn cool humans. That I feel I talk like the to. best clients are like the ones that you have long term are the ones that you're truly friendly with, and you just have chemistry. It yeah. comes down to chemistry, like any other relationship. Mm-hmm. So if you vibe with them, then they're going to stick around for a while. Yeah, and the, the cool power that we have is when you do annoy us, we can just be like, "You're annoying me." Click. Yeah. And shut it off, and you mm-hmm. cannot find us again. Like you, just Unless you turn- send me a thousand dollars. Exactly. <laughs> you, know, you know, you can block, you can turn your lines off, you can shut it off. It's pretty damn empowering. Yeah, I feel like I uh, lucked into like easy street on life. Not that my life is always easy or anything, or that I don't. I haven't worked hard for my success because I certainly have. But I really love what I do, and I know you do too, oh, Doctor Lovejoy. Love. We love our jobs. We love learning about people's different fetishes and like i guess just encouraging them to talk about it that's it's kind really of the coolest fun. part yeah. we have met in the year and few months that we've been doing this so many different kinds of people across the board and it is pretty damn amazing to learn about people's lives and that everybody is we're all the same we're all human no matter what you're doing right now you still came the same way i came mm-hmm. we got here all yeah the same and people are really cool when they let their guard down and it's pretty damn fun yeah it's really cool the camaraderie that sex workers have amongst each other because a lot of society looks down on us whether you take your clothes off or you don't take your clothes off if you're a cam girl or you're an escort we're all lumped in that same group of whores to most of society so we really support each other and we try to one of the nicest compliments we got about our show was that we show a really human side mm-hmm. of the like Humanize the, everyone. Yeah, the like the girls. like the porn girls that come on because a lot of times they go on the shows and they're just strictly asked sex questions. Whereas I feel like we get deeper and yeah, you I wanna, know I want to show fans, that you're a person. You don't just fuck on a camera. That means your whole life is fucking on a camera. And their it's fans not. love it. You both got deep today on the show, and it's yeah. funny too. I mean, it's funny, but there were deep yeah, moments, exactly. and I appreciated the juxtaposition. Exactly. I was, it wasn't all just blah blah blah, and, and you know, it kind of like fun and and banter. It was there was some deep, awesome stuff too. Um, well, I love both of you, and can you tell our listeners how they can find you and a little bit about your show, just so uh, yeah, they can they can get to you. Sure, you can find the show uh, on Twitter at I Want Radio Show. You can find it on Instagram at I Want Radio Official. I Want Radio is live Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 415. That's Vivid Radio. Uh, we love the partnership with them, and we're having a great time. So come hang out with us. So where can everyone get you, beautiful? Yeah. Oh, and <laughs> and me. You can find all of my content at IWantNikki dot com. You can find me on Twitter at Braddy underscore Nikki, and my Instagram is Braddy Nikki. 
And you can call me and I have non-traditional phone sex. Mm -hmm. I want Dr. Lovejoy and find my erotic audios. And uh, Twitter, Femdom Therapy, Instagram, I want Dr. Lovejoy. And you already gave out our show? Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, You guys are absolutely phenomenal. I wish you guys lived in LA because we would be the fiercest foursome oh, yes. on the we'll f- planet. I smell a repeat I episode. Smell, I can't wait. I smell quarters. <laughs> I smell quarterly episodes. Yes. Well, thank you both so much and thank you to all of our listeners out there. We love you so much. If you have just a moment, just one moment, check out MarginsWine.com and see why we love Margins Wine so much. It absolutely is some of the best wine I've ever had and I'm a wine snob. Amy will tell you true so check out margins wine and if you have another moment go to itunes give us five stars we read all of the reviews we love your feedback and we love you tune in next tuesday i should say see you next tuesday and ciao for now don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more and for 15 percent off of some of our favorite sex toys use coupon code shamelesspp in all caps at purepleasureshop.com